My name is Danica. I'm a contributing editor at Book Ride, and today I want to give you some black, bi, and lesbian book recommendations. So of course February is Black History Month. There's also an FF February thing happening, so a lot of people are reading FF books, and I thought that this would be the perfect time to showcase some great black sapphic books. So these will mostly be books that are both by black authors and about black main characters. There might be a couple that are one or the other, and they'll all have sapphic content. So I'll start with an obvious one, which is the Color Purple by Alice Walker. If you're not familiar with it, this is a book that deals with really dark subject matter, including rape and racism, but it somehow manages to still have an overall message of hope and resilience. What I really love about this book is that it centers relationships between women. There's this huge cast of characters, and they're all trying to deal with living in a world that is deeply racist and deeply misogynistic, and each of them kind of has their own strategies for trying to live within that society. But even though they're really different people, they find these connections across difference and they build this network of support that is really inspiring. Most of the descriptions really downplay the queer content, which is annoying because it's not subtext at all. Celia is proudly gay, she has sexual relationships with women on the page, and her relationship with Suge is a pretty important part of the book. So I'm still a little bit frustrated that that seems to get downplayed a lot, but this is definitely one of my favorite books of all time. It's inspiring it's beautiful. Definitely check it out. The next book I wanted to talk about is The Summer We Got Free by Mia McKenzie. Whenever I talk about this book I always describe it as the moment before a summer thunderstorm. It's just that charged anticipation where you can feel something building. This is about Ava and we see her life now as well as when she was a child. And when we see her as a child she is this absolutely unrestrainable, vibrant kid. And then when we see her as an adult she is this very close off, kind of dulled, safe person. And by rotating between those two, we get a sense of how she ended up that way and what happened in between. She is living with her family in her old family home, and this is a home that is haunted by something that happened in their past, and it's something they're not acknowledging. So when someone new comes to the house, she really shakes that up, and they start to grapple with what happened in their past. I just think this is such a brilliant and affecting book. This is one I want to reread over and over. And then I wanted to recommend some YA middle grade books, starting with This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow. This is a literal getting the band back together book. It's about Dia, Jules, and Hannah who used to be inseparable. They were in a band together. Then a series of things happened to split them apart. One of those things is that Hannah ends up in the hospital because of her alcoholism. She later goes to rehab. And around that same time, Dia's boyfriend, who she'd only been seeing for a little while, unexpectedly dies. And she finds out soon after that that she is pregnant. So Dia decides to cut ties with Hannah. She thinks that she's not a good influence in her life now that she is going to be a mother. Jules sides with Dia and they kind of go their separate ways. But now Hannah is out of rehab. She's sober. Dia has a toddler and there is a battle of the bands and the reward for battle of bands is $10,000 and if they can get the band back together and make it work this would change all of their lives. So this is about them trying to kind of mend that relationship between the three of them. What I love about this book is that the characters are so multifaceted and they have such complex relationships with each other. There's also a really cute FF romance and that one stars Jules. Also I just love the cover of this one. And for all of these I also have full reviews of the Lesbury if you want to learn more about them. Next is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. This is about Suzette who is black, bisexual, and Jewish and all of those identities intersect in her life and it deals with some of the microaggressions and things around that. But the real story is about her relationship with her brother. They were really, really close, and then he was diagnosed with bipolar at the same time that Suzette was sent away to boarding school. And now that she's come back, they're trying to mend their relationship. This is a quiet and thoughtful book with a lot of depth. So this next one is a recent read for me. It's The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petras. This is about Audrey, who is living in Trinidad and develops a relationship with the granddaughter of the pastor, and they have a really cute romance until they get caught by her mother and she is sent to live with her kind of estranged father in the U.S. The other perspective is another queer black teenage girl. Her name is Mabel and she's dealing with finding out that she has a terminal illness. Audrey and Mabel are both really well-rounded characters and I loved the relationship between them. There's also so much going on in this book. It has this undercurrent of astrology. Mabel finds
finds comfort in reading the prison diaries of someone who is on death row and ends up reaching out to him. We learn about Audrey's grandmother and what she was like when she was younger. There's also poetry interspersed throughout. This is a really ambitious book and it's also really beautiful and I hope to see more from this author soon. Next is The Host You Pass on the Way by Jacqueline Woodson, which is a tiny middle grade novel. My copy was 99 pages. It's about Stagger Lee, who is 14, and she is dealing with a lot of identity issues. So she is mixed race. She has one black parent and one white parent. She is kind of small town famous for her grandparents who were killed in an anti-civil rights bombing. And she's also struggling with figuring out her sexuality. This is the summer when her adopted estranged cousin Trout comes to visit and they kind of process a lot of this together. This is a slow, thoughtful read. Another middle grade novel is Hurricane Child by Case and Callender. This has a lot of complexity to it. It's about Carolyn who is growing up in the Virgin Islands. She's having a really difficult time. She's ostracized at school. She's starting to develop feelings for the new girl at school and her mother has disappeared and she has no idea what happened to her. This is a little more difficult and dark than I'd expect from a middle grade novel. Carolyn faces a lot of homophobia. It's kind of this messy situation. She sees spirits and she is trying to figure out what that means and if they're going to lead her to her mother. This is a really interesting and complex book. And then there's the Goldie Vance series by Hope Larson and Brittany Williams. They co-created this series together. Hope Larson I believe is white and Brittany Williams is black but she is no longer working on the later series. This is an all ages comic with a queer black teenage girl detective. It's kind of Nancy Drew meets Lumberjanes with the little Veronica Mars in there. The plot is just a little bit more serious and political than I'd expect from something like Lumberjanes, but it's still really fun. Of course, what I loved about this is the queer content. Goldie meets Diane and is just immediately smitten with her. The romance is adorable and I can't wait to keep on going with the series. And then I've got some sci-fi and fantasy books I want to recommend. The first one is Ascension by Jacqueline Koyanagi. This has a black main character but not a black author. This is about Alana who is a spaceship mechanic with a chronic illness. As you can probably tell from earlier in this video, I love books that have complex characters who all have these intricate relationships with each other and that's something that this book really focuses on. There's sort of a found family aspect here. There's also a polyamorous relationship but although I really appreciated the romance, it's no more important than Alana's difficult relationship with her sister. Then there's The Salt Roads by Nalo Hopkinson. I was actually assigned this in a university class and I was very happily surprised to find out there are two lesbian sex scenes within the first 15 pages. This is super queer. It follows three black women at different times and in different places through history. So one is in 18th century Haiti, one is 19th century Paris, and the other is in Egypt in the 4th century. And they are all at some point possessed by the spirit named Elise. This is a hugely ambitious book that explores racism throughout time and how these women find their own ways to survive and to fight back. It is sometimes surreal and totally engrossing and it made me a lifelong Nalo Hopkinson fan. Speaking of Nalo Hopkinson, I have to mention her short story collection, Falling in Love with Hominids. This only has one sapphic story but it is the longest story in the collection and there are other queer stories. I was hooked from the first sentence which is, I didn't used to like people much. Ours is the prettiest is the sapphic story and it's set in the Borderlands series which is a series that a bunch of different authors write for and they have like a shared setting and characters. I just loved this collection. It made me so happy when I was reading it so I couldn't resist throwing that one in as well. Next up is Everfair by Nisi Schall. This is a steampunk alternate history of the Belgian Congo. This is one of the smartest books I've ever read I feel like. It really explores colonialism through so many different points to view characters. So you get to see the well-meaning white supporters of Everfair, the existing king and queen of the region trying to reclaim control, the Chinese workers who are brought in by the Belgium king, mixed race European Everfair inhabitants, and lots more. I lost track of how many point of view characters there are. This story spans decades and it tackles politics, war, espionage, love, betrayal. There are three queer women point of view characters and the complicated, deeply flawed, and so compelling relationship between two of them is really at the heart of this book. Then there's The Gilda Stories by Jewel Gomez, which
which is a vampire story. It follows a vampire from right before her change when she was escaping slavery to 200 years after that, so it actually ends in 2050. It almost reads like a collection of short stories and you really get a sense of what immortality would actually be like. And it's also kind of a history of how slavery and racism has happened throughout time in the US. I loved the take on mythology, both incorporating existing mythology and kind of creating her own moral code for vampires. And then while we're on the topic of lesbian vampires, I'll throw in Better Off Red by Rebecca Weatherspoon, which is a very different vampire book. It is erotica. It's about vampire sorority sisters. It did have like a couple issues with the plot, but this is a really fun story that manages to have vampires who have consensual relationships. And despite all the vampire orgies, there's also compelling characters. And finally, for nonfiction, I want to recommend Hunger, A Story of My Body by Roxane Gay. This is a memoir dealing with Roxane Gay's journey with her body. It follows her being raped as a child and fat phobia. It is a really dark, sometimes brutal book, but Roxane Gay's writing is so approachable and she writes like you're having a conversation with her, which makes it easier to read. She also talks about coming out as bisexual and some of her relationships with women. Roxane Gay is just such an incredible writer. So those are some of my favorites, but of course that's only scratching the surface. There are lots more on my TBR. I'll probably have a post up in the next few days at the Lesbury that has the books that are on my TBR as well if you're interested in those. Let me know in the comments what your favorite black bi and lesbian books are. I'd love more recommendations. Or if you've read any of these, what did you think of them? And thank you for watching.